Brian. Um, this is Blake Thomason. Hi, this is Emily Titus. Hi, I'm Kayla Nichols. And I'm Erica Vandiver. And we're just, um, we're from Drew University and we're ready for the interview. Um, it says that you serve as the Executive Creative Director for Bulldog Solutions and that you're a marketing and multimedia veteran that has developed the creative and go-to market strategy for many of the largest B2B brands in the world. Um, could you tell us like a little bit about your expertise and about like the firm's expertise? Yeah, um, I've been with Bulldog here for about nine years. I'm the, the chief creative officer for the agency, and so uh, I head up all of our writing and design teams, and I work up front with our chief strategy officer to uh, to advise brands on how they kind of talk about themselves, like their, their digital strategy of how they communicate with their customers or their customers or their customers. So, um, you know, it's a full gamut of marketing from someone doesn't know who the hell your company is all the way down mm -hmm. to uh, they're, they're telling all their friends about how they do business with you. We kind of, uh, we advise, you know, large companies like IBM and Bank of America and Humana to, uh, on, on how to do that better. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> so, like, we went ahead and analyzed some of your campaigns and some of your projects and, um, we kind of dived into, one of the ones that we dived into was the Holiday Resiliency Campaign. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, um, just like before we get into that, what do you, what is the process for creating a campaign? So like more specifically, we want to know like what your process is for conducting your research or finding your research. Um, and then like the management side and then the creative process for each campaign. Yeah, um, so, you know, I'll walk you through some of the basic steps here real quick, but I also kind of want to start by saying that, you know, the process is a little bit different depending on the people that are working on the project, and so we, at Bulldog anyway, we definitely like to have a bit more of a, an organic process that happens that um, different people work together differently, and so... Um, to have an overly rigid process for how you approach a lot of those things that, that you mentioned um, doesn't work well for all people. And so depending on whether they're introverts or extroverts or how they like to collaborate, um, the process works just a little bit differently depending on the team members. But in general, the steps would be um, whenever an upfront account executive is talking to a new brand, uh, they're kind of trying to document what the brand's challenge is. Uh, you know, where, where in the continuum of marketing from early awareness to engagement to, you know, selling to, you know, onboarding a customer to customer marketing to advocacy, like all those different stages of, you know, how, what a customer goes through as they kind of start to do business with your, with your company, uh, you know, where, where does it hurt the most? We're trying to figure out from a brand, like, Kind of you know, one of the questions we kind of ask is, you know, where do you suck the most at, at, at this kind of stuff, right? And so, uh, if we can figure out kind of either your knee or your elbow, you know, we're, we're looking for uh, the, the area where we can focus our energies and and make sure that you know we, we're making the improvements in the area where it has the most effect for the company. So, once we figure that out, then you know we're we're, we're doing a diagnostic of, of the industry, sort of what, how does that person's customer actually buy? What's their real process? And the only way to figure that out, there's no textbook that tells you, you have to go out and talk to some of those customers. And so we ask our, our client to provide us maybe a few different names of people that uh, might be kind of people that they're talking to right now that haven't yet selected them or one of their competitors. And so they're kind of in the buying process. Maybe we talk to a few of their most successful customers and ask them a lot of questions about why did you select this brand and what makes you know what made you go with them versus someone else. And then maybe we we also like to talk to some some customers that didn't select them and say you know why did you pass up this brand? Why did you go with someone else? Because there's a lot to learn there as well. And so uh, you know customer research is really important. So we have uh, a few people here that will go out and kind of conduct some of those surveys and try and bring back some meaningful insights. Um, by talking to the customers, that's where you get most of the information, honestly, in terms of learning how to, how to improve the communications. Uh, and then from there, yeah, we're, we're taking that and, and distilling it down and 
uh, using some, you know, the web, web-based research around the competition and how they talk and you know, a variety of primary and secondary research sources. Then we kind of distill that down and get our creative team involved. Uh, that's where kind of myself and our creative directors come in and we're starting to look at all that information and putting together what we think a cool, um, you know, communication angle, communication strategy for how, how can we, you know, what technology could we use and what would the message be that we're trying to get to, to this buyer. Uh, drawing all that up into kind of a big blueprint for how the campaign might work. You know, kind of sharing those ideas with our clients, going through a bit of a back and forth. Uh, typically, our clients are going to understand how it works inside their, their, their company a lot better than we will, but they're relying on us as their agency partner to uh, maybe bring them with some actionable insights about their customer that they don't know because they spend a lot of time in the office. And, you know, most brands don't get out of the office to go talk to their customers. And so when their agents, people do that for them, it really helps them out. Um, let's see. So then from there, yeah, we're, uh, we're sharing a program architecture and a campaign vision. And it goes through a little bit of back and forth in terms of an editing process uh, to kind of whittle it down to some, some really smart ideas and determining how those are going to get sent out. Is it an email campaign or a programmatic buying, you know, media strategy? There's all kinds of different ways to, to get out and reach an audience. Um, and, you know, normally it's a, it's a combination of a lot of different tactics that, that, that are a part of the program. Uh, and then, yeah, we're, it's, we, we move right into execution. So I, I kind of rambled through some stuff there. I want to make sure that I cover off on most of what you were asking for. You are asking about sort of how we get started, how we kind of collaborate and develop a strategy, and then how we how we go through a creative process to, to get to there. And, and I'll say it's normally our creative directors and our strategists and the account executives that like, the entire agency can't jump in really deep and, and get really, really in, smart about a business before we do business with them. So it has to be just a few people. Like only a few people can go really, really deep. Everyone else kind of has to be kind of on, on the ready, standing by, waiting to see if that client becomes a client of our agency. And if they do, then we can share all the research with them. But uh, when we're up front, we try and bring some of our most veteran uh, you know, strategists and creative directors to the table to, to get smart about a company and make, you know, some strong recommendations. Okay, cool. Yeah, that answered my question perfectly. <laughs> um, so, more... You guys, are, you guys are with Drury, right? Yes. Yeah, we are. Where's, where's Drury at? Um, it's in Springfield, Missouri. Okay, I, I graduated from Missouri State. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh! That's cool. Gosh. That's awesome. Yep, we have some friends yeah. from MSU. <clears throat> cool. So I, okay, so more specifically, um, we kind of looked at like the how to, um, the holiday resiliency campaign, and it says that you partnered with SunGuard and created like a three-part video series that utilized um, timely holiday humor um, uh, via clever metaphors. And so like in the videos, I noticed you would say things like, it says, problem solved, she'll be sending you cat pictures in no time, like talking about the grandma. And then like, um, just like easy does it, Herbert Hoover was in office when the house was offered, talking about um, the like supplemental power for the house and things like that. And then it, I kind of clicked on the white paper that came after it. And it was definitely very much more professional, but somehow with the transitions, um, you seem to be very like consistent, I feel like with the tone and you, you kept the viewer engaged. How do you like, how do you differentiate the language between the video and then the white paper? Like what's the process between making sure that you can keep the viewer engaged? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. yeah. So on that on that program, we had a company, SunGuard, that had all they had really developed were some really like academic white paper content. Mm -hmm. And what they were trying to do was deliver those white papers to their database of people, you know, the customers and prospects. And they had this big list of you know database full of email addresses and names, and they're they're sitting there writing emails, trying to to drop a, a white paper to them and go, you know, download this white paper on, you know. A, mouthful of jargon, right? It's like a whole right. bunch of like academic sounding language and right. and to no to no one's surprise, no one was really opening up those emails and no one was downloading the white papers. Right. And so um, when we came in and kind of started looking at this, we were saying, guys, 
you'll need almost an interim creative strategy where you earn the right to educate them, right? That right. you can't necessarily, like everyone's trying to provide them very much you know, the same academic content. There's a whole bunch of other technology companies that are also emailing that very same IT person. It's saying, like, you know, download, our, our, download our newest research on this, and everyone's trying to talk about their own technology. And, um, the thing that might cut through the clutter is sort of acknowledging that the audience is human. There's, um, right. you know, whether they're a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic mm-hmm. or an IT professional, and, you know, everyone watches somewhat the same movies and TV, and um, everyone gets up and does a lot of the same things. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Humans are inter- entertained by much of the same thing. Mm-hmm. So at that time, I think uh, I had been watching a lot of Wes Anderson movies and was really into kind of some of the Wes Anderson art direction style. Uh-huh. And so um, when they came to us with the problem, I kind of, you know, I said, why don't we do, uh, you know, we're coming up on the holidays. I think they talked to us in like in the October time frame. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I pitched a very rapid campaign. I said, you know, over the next four or five weeks, why don't I go film, you know, a series of videos? And we, we found a house out just outside of Austin, Texas, out in the country. There was this historic home, and we said, we're going to go shoot in this house, and we're going to bring a team of actors to the table, and we're going to write these plot lines. And basically, the, the premise is going to be that whatever it is that you want to educate them about in that white paper, why don't we try and say, like, if they understood how to, those principles of what you're trying to educate them about, right. You know, those are sort of principles that should you know, kind of um, help them in their work life. But what if maybe those same principles could help them in maybe their private life as well? And maybe we mm-hmm. start the conversation there and say, you know, if you're a savvy IT professional, then what? It, how, how could you use some of what you know as an IT professional to maybe do something that's happening right now? And exactly. so the campaign was going to be was going to be launching around the November December time frame. Mm-hmm. We decided that mm-hmm. we would make it about. Um, surviving your family for the holidays. And so we kind of, we thought that would be something that everyone could relate to. Most people tend to maybe go see their family around the holidays. And so we thought that uh, that's something that cuts across. It doesn't matter, male, female, age right. group. It doesn't matter. I mean, anyone can really relate to that kind of maybe subtle humor. And so we did these videos. There was a new video player that had an integrated call to action at the end so that you could actually kind of click on the right. button and yeah. download the, the, the white paper at the very end of it. By rolling out that kind of a program, um, you know, we went out and filmed the videos and had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. And uh, when they when they rolled out, uh, they had like a 500 percent increase in the number of people that were downloading the white papers yeah. because it, the inter- the entertainment strategy like was wide. You know, the subject line for you know survive your family like that that gets people to open up an email. And then when there's a big beautiful exactly. picture of this like really cool looking video with a play mm-hmm. button on it. That's a lot more enticing than download this academic white paper. Exactly. It sounds like something that's going to take an hour to create yeah. it to even process. You don't have time for that. So, right. you know, basically, you're, you're sort of incrementally in baby steps. You're earning their trust, and yep. then, you know, by entertaining them first and saying we're a cool brand, we get it. And then now, like, if you want to, you know, really get some value out of, you know, work, you know, talking to us, then maybe now is a good time to download this white paper. And most people were willing to do that after you had kind of, you know, it's like a little bit of sort of foreplay, right? You got to kind of like break the ice a little bit to kind of uh, make sure (laughs) that um, they're willing to like take, you know, to to take the extra step with you. Yeah. I love how you said earn, earn like the right to educate them. I think that that's a great way to put it. So, and it's, it was a really good campaign. So I think that's awesome. Really great insight. Um, okay, so I was looking at the IT survivalist uh, campaign, yeah. and so yeah. I just had a few questions about that. Um, so, like, what kind of research did you do to decide that that, that was, the, like, the right approach for this campaign, like the survival theme good. and everything? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, so, coming out of the success of the holiday series, that was with the same company, and we decided to kind of pivot the marketing team there at SunGuard said, man, that holiday thing was really successful. Uh, how can we kind of recreate that to some degree, but maybe not, you know, it's not the holidays anymore. We really like that actor. Maybe we could do something else. And so we, uh, we basically, we came back to them with four or five different, totally different directions for how maybe that character from the holiday program could kind of go into different different directions. And one of them was right. just maybe... Uh, the Bear Grylls type stuff was going, it was really popular at that time, and all the, you know, 
Man vs. Wild and all the different shows yeah. that were going on. And we were like, okay, well, what if we, you know, a lot of people were watching that. And, again, those shows kind of cut across a lot of genres and generations and, and age groups and genders. So we said, well, well, you know, yeah, that could be really cool. What if the what if her character was out camping with, like, a friend of his? And so we uh, we said, yeah, that could work. And then we, we drew up that concept and about four others. And the way that we decided on which one to go with was... Um, SunGuard's marketing team actually um, took those concepts and they soft-pitched them to uh, a team of about 10 of their best customers. And so actual customers okay. that would be the people that you know, would have been you know, looking at these types of communications, we said, they said, which one of these things would be the most interesting to you? And basically kind of had them vote uh, in kind of a very democratic style. Like their customers kind of, it was basically like sort of a focus group. Uh, okay. type thing where they focus grouped it with a, a series of prospect customers and they they selected the survivalist. They said that they thought that was the most interesting and could be the most fun. So that took us out into the woods to go film another series with that same actor and kind of do a whole kind of other, we, we, we kind of used that one, um, again, with sort of a, a bit of a Wes Anderson kind of fun style to mm-hmm. it. And uh, yeah, so there was a video series that anchored it, but then we wanted to really take the theme a little bit further this time. So we took that survival theme and turned it into, a, you know, an outdoorsy infographic and a survival yeah. guide and all kinds of other things. And we really started to do some more thematic content because if you can do, uh, you know, if you, the client's budget can go far enough to do not only that fun kind of a you know, video series that can anchor assets, but also actually use that theme to then inspire the white paper and the infographic and uh, whatever else, you know, the, you know, 10, 10 steps to doing this or that guide, yeah. all the different types of content that you might be a part of your marketing program. If you can take the theme all the way down to that level, then it's a really integrated, really cool feeling campaign. So we tried to kind of bundle up all the assets and, and make them all survival themes. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so how, <clears throat> how did you decide what type of strategic writing um, was going to be most effective for this campaign? Um, you know, I'd love to tell you that there was a big, you know, there was a, a lot of research that went into determining exactly how to write. But honestly, uh, when you have a writer on your team, they're not they're not fully a chameleon. They can't um, they can't fully change their style. In fact, what you want is a writer to be able to bring their personality to the table and kind of write in the way that they think is fun. And if you have a great writer that that consistently writes fun language, then, yeah, you might, you might steer it a little this way or a little that way, depending on whether it's a healthcare company that you're writing for or a technology company, you know, that you're going to have, a, generally with a technology company like SunGuard, you have a bit more of an opportunity for levity and fun because no one's life is at stake generally when you're talking about these things versus if you're marketing to surgeons at hospitals. Right. Um, you might, might not be able to get away with quite as much, right? They're truly like if someone's life on life on the line with the technology that you might be calling to that the surgeon. So, um, you, know, you just have to kind of like, it's more about tempering the level of humor than maybe the personality because I think the personality comes from the writer. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Hi, I had a few questions about um, Smart Campus that you guys created for Zebra Technologies. Yeah. Um, my question basically was just kind of why a Smart Campus? Like, did Zebra Technologies want to target campuses specifically, or was there research that showed that there were more potential sales for campuses? Because, I mean, you guys could have created a Smart anything, really. Um. Yeah, we uh, we decided to go with, um, they, they specifically wanted to go uh, target education and a couple of others. And so on that particular program where we were doing the interactive campus, it was, it was really trying to reach out to um, a particular buyer at, at universities that could show how everything from the bookstore to other things would be integrated. So that was more about audience targeting than it was about kind of the creative process. I mean, the creative process was... We were showing the smart campus just because we really wanted to reach out to school. Yeah, was that a pretty successful campaign? Do you think? Um, yeah, I mean the, the the way that that one was measured was mostly just that um, you know engagement. Did people play around with it? So you know, I think uh, we yeah I think we had we had really some pretty good engagement with that. Just kind of playing around and like looking at it. 
you know, it's that or sort of the more academic kind of like long chill reading. So anytime you can almost turn something into a little bit of a game, as long as the user interface is really easy to navigate, I think you, you generally you know, see people want to play around with something that looks fun, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would say that that's probably something that we try and adopt on all of our campaigns. Okay, Brian, well, I'm um, just to kind of wrap things up, we were just wondering because, you know, all of us are kind of majoring in the communication, advertising, marketing area. Um, if you had any advice for um, strategic writers um, or people looking to work in advertising and marketing and what that would be? Yeah, how many of you guys are writers? All four all of us. us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, yeah, all right, and hopefully some of what I was saying about the writing uh, comes through. Like, I would say that... Um, what I see in a lot of writers that are maybe out in the career field, kind of like looking to get a job, we are looking at we're, we're looking at writing samples. But I'll say from my end, um, you know, your what school you graduated from and your GPA and all of the you know kind of all of that kind of stuff. Generally, um, I hope you didn't. I hope this doesn't rub anyone the wrong way, but I'll say that it matters a lot less to me than how well you just act like a normal, fun person to be on our team. Like, generally, if you're looking to get into an agency environment, it's about culture. And so we're looking for um, a person that likes, can I imagine myself going out and having a beer with you, right? Like, that's kind of, honestly, like, a, a lot more of the criteria goes into something like that in your writing samples. We're looking at, like, what have you written? And hopefully, if it's full, I mean, if it's full of jargon and hard to read sentences, and you know, those things, you're you're obviously off to a really bad start, and probably won't be under consideration. But if you've written fun things, and I feel like oh, there's a real person behind there, and you're really giving us a glimpse into the way that you actually think, um, we're looking for authenticity and transparency, and like just someone that's like sort of unafraid to put themselves out there in their writing. And brands are looking for that, too. Like we only work with pretty stodgy brands, and they're desperately trying to figure out how to humanize their writing. So when you have a writer that is willing to really put themselves out there and, and inject some real personality and humanity into their writing, those are the things that we're looking for. And so I know it might be a natural tendency of a writer to sit there and say, well, I need to be able to present myself as a very technical writer that understands complex language and, you know, almost writes like an engineer. And the problem is that that's the way a lot of brands are writing right now. Like, with left to their own devices, they actually have an engineer writing these things. And so um, they're really looking for a writer that can, can just, you know, have a little bit of fun with your writing in a way that um, doesn't work people the wrong way. Of course, I mean, there's, you know, there's some boundaries to it, of course, but, you know, how do you take that tempered approach to really making sure that your writing is fun and has just just enough of, um, you know, personality into it to make it something that people keep reading? Um, I see that, that that's that's something that writers struggle with. I think that a lot of people present portfolios to the agency here, and their portfolios are technically accurate. They had great GPAs. You know, they you know went to a great school. But if I can't if I can't sense from a little bit of fun and personality and like I said if I can't feel like I'm there's a real person behind the writing then it just doesn't it's not gonna like it's not gonna stick perfect okay well Ryan thank you so much um, I think that's all we have for you as far as questions was there anything else that you wanted to add or yeah thanks for calling uh, I mean uh, yeah, I don't know where you guys are after, upon graduation, where you guys are looking to land, but um, if all Texas is on your radar, then, then look me up, and uh, I'm happy to take a look at any of your portfolios and your writing samples, and if you guys want any uh, just kind of uh, feedback in general on on your portfolios as you're out there kind of hitting the street trying to find a job, um, I'm happy to give you... Um, Happy to give you any, any kind of feedback I can provide if you want to send something over and I can put on LinkedIn or, or whatever. Ah, cool. Thank Perfect. you. That's awesome. I think we'll all be looking up on LinkedIn. <laughs> We're all like freaking out on the other Great. side of the phone. Yeah, best of luck. And if you guys need to, if you guys need to talk again, I'll make myself available for sure. I hope you guys um, right. hope this project works well and good luck uh, on your on your March towards graduation. And if you guys, like I said, are looking to move to Austin, Texas, then look me up. Thanks. Well, thank okay. you so thank much. Thank you so much, Brian. You have a good day. Thanks so much. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. So we have just inter 
We have just interviewed Brian Mashall at Bulldog Solutions um, out of Austin, Texas. Um, website Bulldog Solutions at B2B. Thank you very much.